Hey, welcome back to Number Corner for day 12. Guys, we are so close to being done with September. We have five more days to go after today. So for day 12, we're going to do our normal. We're going to update our calendar grid. We're also going to update our calendar collector. And then we're going to talk about some more story problems. Are you ready? I know I am. Let's look at today's calendar marker. And since we're so good at making predictions, we're just going to jump right in and look at it right away. I'm pretty sure it's what you were thinking. It's following the same pattern. But what is the equivalent modern number? Great. 200 plus 50 plus 3. 253. Let's mark that on our calendar um, grid recording sheet. Two hundred fifty-three. All right, now let's update our calendar collector really quickly. We had some really good conversations about how you guys were figuring out how many inches we have, how many feet we have, and how many yards we have. And today is exciting because we're completing another yard. So I'm adding my 12 six-inch piece today, and I need to update that on my calendar collector recording sheet. So, day 12, how many inches do we have? Twelve times six. We could use what we've known here, ten times six, plus two times six. Sixty plus twelve, you got it. Seventy-two inches. I'm so curious to know if any of you guys are on track with your predictions about how many inches you think we're going to collect this month. Can't wait to find out. Well, let's go ahead and add our feet. We talked about this the last time, and we said that um, the number of day it is is usually going to be the numerator in halves for feet. So if I were to write feet in, as a fraction, what would it be? Good. 12 halves. And what if I wanted to write that as a whole number? Because we did just complete a yard. You got it. It would be six feet. So 12 halves is equivalent to six. Okay, so what about yards? We know we completed two yards, you're right. But what if I wanted to write that as a fraction? Right, we have, today's day 12, so we would have 12 sixth size pieces because each six inch that we collect is worth one six. Good job. Well, today I told you that we're gonna spend some more time doing some word problems. I wanna remind you that one of the goals with solving problems is communication, being able to read the problem, understand what the problem is saying, um, find the critical information, Choose a strategy, execute the strategy, and then be able to explain your thinking to others. So we're going to look at this problem here, titled Xavier's Garden. I want you to take a second and read that silently to yourself. Great. I'm going to read it once more because you may remember, I love reading word problems at least two times. Xavier has 48 vegetable plants. Each plant needs one square foot of space to grow. If Xavier makes a rectangular garden for his plants, what are some possible dimensions for his garden so all 48 plants will have enough room to grow? So the question is, what? What is the problem asking us to figure out? Mm -hmm. I'm going to move this down a little so I can write it out for us. It's asking the dimensions for his garden. Okay, can we be a little more specific? Right. If his garden needs at least, or I'll just put needs, 48 square 
feet. What are the possible dimensions? You guys agree with that? Great. Let's make it a little smaller so it can fit in our space here. All right, so let's underline the information that's going to help us solve this problem. We know that he has 48 vegetables, and each one is one square feet, or one square foot, so that's 48 square feet. Right, so what's the question? What are some possible dimensions? This is going to help us figure it out. We know he has 48 plants and each one is one square foot. So that means he needs a total of at least 48 square feet. Okay? Let's look at part C. Write an equation for the problem. Use letters to stand for the unknown quantities. Just to remind you, unknown is something that we don't know. And a quantity is an amount. Also to remind you, that an equation has to have an equal sign and an answer. And if we don't know the answer, then we're going to use a letter to stand for what we haven't figured out yet. So, what do you think the equation should be? You're right, we do only have one number. No, it's not 48 times something. 48 is actually going to be our total because that's the area that we need to take up for his vegetable plants. Right, so that means something times something should give us the 48. So how can we write that as an equation? Great, since we don't know that something, we can use a letter. Well, what letters might we use? We could use A times B, sure. But I'm thinking, let's use, since we know area is a length times a width, let's use L times W equals 48. L times W equals 48. Okay, so now we can get to work and figure out what could our length be and what could our width be. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and open up your number corner journal to page 12 where you'll find the same problem that we're working on currently, which is Xavier's Garden. And then once you find that, you may want to copy down what we've done here so far and then pause this video so that you can have time to work through this problem on your own. I will challenge you though that once you find one possible solution to this problem, challenge yourself to find another because the question does say what are some possible dimensions which tells us that there could be more than one right answer. And if you're wondering to yourself what a dimension is, remember when we found the area when we played our game Splat? We also found the area when we did Megan's Marbles and we have one side length times another side length. And that's what a dimension is. So if you're wondering, there you go. So if you haven't already, pause this video so you can have time to work it out. If you're needing a little push or a little boost in your thinking, then stick with me just like last time and we'll start thinking through this problem together before I release you to work on your own. Okay, are you still with me? Great. So, so far, we don't know much, but we do know something, which is our length times our width should equal 48. And I'm going to make that really big at the top. So, one way to start thinking through this problem is to ask ourselves what numbers multiply together to give us 48? Meaning, what are some factors of 48? Okay, so we have, you guys know, 
six times eight equals 48. Is there something else? Another set of factors that may equal 48. Okay, 12 times four equals 48. Is there anything else? You're not sure? Let's just stick with these two for now. And then maybe as we work through these, you may come up with some different ones. Okay, so length times width. When we're finding the dimensions, that means we have one side length and we have another side length. So if I'm going to do a 6 by 8, I'm actually going to draw it out this time. I'm not going to use our base 10 pieces. And I'm going to choose blue since we're, our um, problems are in blue. And I need a dimension of 6. And this is going to represent 6 by 8. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Notice how the 8 side is longer than the six. So we try to be as proportional as possible. And I'm gonna fill this in. Because we know that six times eight is going to give us an area of 48. The problem is asking, what are some possible solutions? So, some possible solutions. One could be 6 times 8. Let's do the 12 times 4 and let's see if we'll see a connection here. So 12 and 4. So I'm going to do 4 down. 1, 2, actually I'm going to do 12 down. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And four across. And maybe you'll see why I chose to do it like that in just a second. Th two, three, four. So we have a dimension of four. And we have a dimension of 12. And if I were to fill that in like this, we know that the area of that space is still 48. Do you see any connection? between the first problem we did and the second problem. Think about what we did for our problem strings. Yeah, we doubled one factor. So instead of six, we doubled it to make 12. And we have the other. You're right. So then with that in mind, what are some other dimensions that we possibly could have that would give us an area of 48 to fit his plants. Now, this is something that I would love for you to try to do on your own. Just remember some of those big ideas from our problem strings. If you double one factor, the product is going to double. But if you double one factor and have the other, the product is going to remain the same. So use that knowledge and use what we've done here to come up with your own dimensions because I challenge you to not even use these dimensions that we just worked through here together. I just wanted you to think about what are some possible factors that could multiply together to give us 48. Okay, so if you haven't already paused this video to work through some of the other possible dimensions, then you can watch it till the end and then use your extra time to figure it out. Because just like our last time doing problem or doing story problems, we're actually not going to talk through the answer today. We will talk about it more when we come back for another day of Number Corner. And so for those of you who are able to find a dimension, and remember I challenge you to find more than one, and you were able to do that with ease, then I have a question for you. Which garden do you think Xavier would want to build? And what might influence his decision to choose those dimensions that you're thinking? Also, as you're thinking about that, do you think he would prefer a more rectangular or a less rectangular garden? Why or why not? And if you have some extra time, you know I love to give challenges. I would love for you, yes you, to write a story problem much like what we just read. 
write your own story problem that has the same math challenge where we have two unknown factors. That means we have more than one correct answer. So until next time, check your work, go through the challenge if you have extra time, and really think through which one might be the best and why. Thanks for participating for today's Number Corner. I'll see you guys tomorrow with another workout. Bye-bye. Have a great afternoon.